Well, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is still the 12th of um, February 2014, and um, this is one of those shows that's about youth voices, but it's also about something new, and so it's a... Uh, um, so I, I, I like to describe these as vir uh, real but virtual because we're not in the same room staff meetings. And we decided to invite some uh, the co-founder of Tuva Labs uh, to come talk to us because we're always interested in thinking about research and inquiry projects. And I titled this show Personal Inquiry Meets um, Quantitative Data. And you'll find out why here in a second. Um, so we're going to start there with um, um, Marshall Harik. I, th I think I got that right. Yeah. Um, in introducing you, and uh, but we're going to get into other things um, as we go here, uh, just about research in general and so forth. Should introduce myself. I uh, and Jake Jacobs is with us here. We both teach at New Directions Secondary School um, in the Bronx. Um, why don't we have other people introduce themselves as they can? Devin, go ahead, introduce yourself. Okay, <laughs> uh, my name is Thanks. Devin Brown. I'm a student in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I was invited on here about a month ago to speak about a class I had called Food Literacy, which combined um, traditional English skills with real world studies and global issues. Um, and so Paul invited me on tonight, and I'm glad to be here and contribute as I can. What grade level is that? I'm a senior in high school. He's a senior. Yeah. And, and, the, and you're teaching a course or you're in a course? Yeah. I'm in a course. Uh, <laughs> great. Have, you, have you done any research projects recently? Um, not recently. Uh, we were thinking about this spring doing a community outreach where we um, just have people from the neighborhood come in and learn about healthy eating and teach them a quick food or a quick healthy meal option because that's been a major concern we found in Louisville is the lack of time to prepare a healthy meal. Uh, so we were thinking about doing something like that. But I mean, in our, Devin, in, in other classes, have you done any research projects in other classes or papers or anything you have to know? Um, right now I'm working on a literary analysis of The Great Gatsby. Hmm. So that's been interesting. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Tommy, introduce yourself if you will. Hi there. My name is Tommy Buteau, and I'm a teacher in uh, Windsor, Colorado. And um, I'm really excited to hear about this. I'm always interested to see how uh, research is tying into different techniques that I'm using in the class. And so I, I'd like to hear what people have uh, about how uh, using you know, bringing students together in diverse places, how that uh, fits in with the, what we're trying to do with education. Uh, I think it fits in perfectly, but I'd like to hear what uh, the research shows about that as well. Um, so I'm excited to be here. Cool. Tommy, uh, j just explain, uh, again, you're, you're at a parent-teacher conference? I am, yes. Yeah, so I might have, to, might have to turn the camera off here in a while. If I have a parent come in, it's still going on for another hour. But it's really cold here tonight, so there probably won't be anybody else coming in. So we'll see. <laughs> it's really cold in a lot of places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, the, uh, just to stay with you for a second, this is proving that Hangouts work in your school, isn't it? This is, yeah, this is working. Um, so this is the first mm -hmm. time I've tried it. I'll have to, uh, the last year I talked to them about Hangouts because I really wanted to do it for um, Socratic seminars. I just thought it'd be really cool to have one group in the Hangout and then another group that's watching the Hangout and kind of have a back channel going at the same time. It meets all of those things that you try to do in a Socratic seminar in English classes. Um, and, you know, I talked to my district about it, and they hadn't authorized Hangouts uh, for students. So I don't know if they've authorized it for teachers, but I'll, I'll definitely find out because it's your work. You're on with your account right now, right? Yeah, I am, yeah. So we will Actually, be... I'm on with my, this isn't my school account. Okay. Um, I, sh I should try, I guess if I went to the same link, would I be invited on that one? Because I could try it with my school account and see if it works. Uh, don't, don't mess too much. Okay. Also. But if you, um, but think about, just to announce that uh, we are, we are going to, if it's not a snow day tomorrow, even if it is, I'll, I'll still connect up with you all. We're going to try to meet tomorrow at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time with students doing the same kind of thing. 
So there we go. Okay. Um, Joe, just as Chris comes on, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, Joe Paraiso. I teach uh, all 12th grade at Fremont High in Oakland. Um, so we've been very fortunate to have Youth Voices as our forum for our seniors to collect mine and collect, connect mine and Chris's. And it, it's been really cool to, one, just see what other kids are researching um, from whatever lens it is that they chose those topics. Um, but also to see a lot of bridging in terms of some of our social equity topics bridge mm -hmm. communities, just different perspectives. So to speak to, to Tommy's um, question about, you know, how this can potentially, um, I don't know, how it is just good for education. Mm -hmm. You froze for a second. Chris, do you want to jump in there? At all. You, so. Oh, you came back. Um, so, so yeah, um, and it's been very cool. And having the, the Google Hangouts for um, our way of discussing, very cool. Um, and you've been, you've been using them yourself with kids too, right? Yeah, it's uh, been great. So, yeah, I brought, uh, okay, so I did a Hangout on air a couple of days ago with one of my students. Because I didn't know how else to record it, and I don't know what the I'm putting it out there. You know, it's just one of those. <laughs> we were having a conversation. It was just a check-in, like, and I'm having them with all my kids. Okay, she seems on their own. Cool. Uh, um, so, so, so it is it, it is up in your YouTube then. If you you did a Google on air, I did. Find it. I know. Yeah. Go look. It's so the, the one deal on manga. So it's kind of. Oh, cool. oh, I, oh did you say manga? Yeah. Oh wow. Jake, you want to go look at? Go watch it. It's um, and he wants to. He's gonna like have the school. Some of the kids in the school like actually create their own manga about Fremont High. It's gonna be hilarious. I don't know. It's gonna. That be sounds insane. cool. It's so gonna be fun. If you make it Creative Commons, I can put it up on the other page. I can grab it. Yeah. So do you know how to make change the license on a YouTube video? Um, I can figure it out. Yeah, it's pretty easy. It's eventually. in the advanced, right. but you yeah. Cool. Chris Sloan, welcome. Hi. Um, so uh, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach in high school English and media in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, and um, so, yeah, I, Joe was talking a little bit about how we've been trying to connect with each other, um, both through Youth Voices um, asynchronously and then synchronously through these hangouts where we just kind of open up the classroom. Um, and, it's, and it's interesting to see the, the students start to take some ownership of it too. So in, um, for instance, Thursday, you know, Cassidy has volunteered to um, be the spokesperson from our end and, and she's taken it upon herself to try to find some connections with, uh, you know, the students who will be physically in my class but then also the students who are um, in Joe's class at Fremont. Um, so that's, I think it's interesting to see what happens as it becomes maybe more of a routine. At first, I think it was real novelty. Um, and it still is kind of a novelty, but um, I'm interested to see how uh, things go when it just becomes part of, like, there's just an open uh, camera in the classroom. Um, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah we were doing that too. Jake, were you able to hook up with any of the art teachers again or not? Um, I, I tried the first day and it was yeah. it was giving me an error for some reason yeah. um, at that moment. And I think I think I had it in mind to to make the hard hard uh, Ethernet connection instead of trying to rely on the Wi-Fi. So, so um, we, we can look I, into it. Yeah, yeah Wi-Fi has been working for me, so. We'll look at it. Yeah, I probably should have retried today, but you know, it's in the okay. middle of in the middle of teaching our kids. It's 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 always a little hectic. So yeah. Um. But but last Wednesday was interesting because we had a snow. Uh. We we should have had a snow day, but we didn't. And um, you know, Paul Paul got into school, but I couldn't get there. And um. So that's because you use a car. You know? Yeah. I know. Sorry. <laughs> and um well if you can yeah if you can use the car <laughs> but uh I that was the first time that I um I I skyped in my afternoon class at least I tried to I mean um I shouldn't use Skype as an adjective but I it's okay. but Google I don't Google Hangout is uh, 
can't be a verb very well, right? <laughs> um, um, so yeah, we we um we only had a few kids in, and Paul was kind of like all hands on deck. There wasn't a lot of teachers in either last Wednesday, so um, we just kind of broadcast in from here in the office. And uh, my daughter was home, and she was, you know, curious about looking in. And there was the classroom, and um, Paul also had uh, one of our students named Carl um, open up a, a, another laptop and bring that into the, the next room. So we had, uh, you know, a yeah. couple of different a couple of different stations, and you know, we tried to I tried to teach the class remotely, and it kind of worked for a couple of kids for a little while, <laughs> but it was kind <laughs> of a crazy day with no rules. So. Yeah. Um, you so know, it was like a good experiment, experiment, and we'll see. Yeah. Uh, so, partial. That's uh, that. That's our crew. Welcome. Um, I, 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 uh, do you want to say more about yourself and tell us about Tuva Labs a little bit, and sure. put it within context of uh, what you've heard here, the kind of research and inquiry that we try to do in connecting of kids. And, yeah. Well, yeah. what's Tuva Labs all about? Yeah. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Herschel Parikh, and uh, I'm the founder, one of the founders of Tuba Labs. And uh, brief history about Tuba Labs was is that it was it's a it's a tool that I started building uh, a few years ago while I was volunteering at a at a nonprofit tutoring center in a large slum, one of the largest slums in South Delhi in India. And uh, there's a whole backstory about how I got there and you know why and how it all come came about. But I spent about seven months learning how to code. Um, to build the first version of it, and then we launched uh, about two years ago. So um, there's a kind of a, a lot of painful things that went on to get this thing started. But basically, um, the the primary vision and purpose and, and our work is all about um, enabling students um, to uh, hone in their their data analysis and data exploration skills. So what we call data literacy skills. And uh, this is with the belief that uh, as students move on um, in middle school students, high school students, as they move on to college and beyond, um, data, data, being able to maneuver data and be able to understand it and be able to visualize and, and interpret it are, are starting to become gateway skills in our society. Um, and it's, it's gotten to a point now where in, or, in order to successfully participate in, in our world and be able to contribute um, in, in the workforce, um, we have to. Uh, our, our students need to be able to uh, be very comfortable with with data. Uh, so that's the premise. And um, once we started looking into this in, in more detail, we realized that there's a a really powerful way to um, bring the, the bring data and and everything that comes around it into any topic um, that the teacher or student might be exploring or uh, be covering in the classroom environment, um, and so the the focus of our work is is primarily um, geared towards three things. So uh, the data in and of itself um, aligns and gives us an opportunity to align uh, the instruction to the Common Core standards, especially when it comes to mathematics. Um, you know, if if you've looked at the Common Core, and I'm sure all of us have, um, data analysis and, and introduction to data happens very early, as early as third grade now. Um, and it, it, probability and statistics have come into sixth grade now. So there's a fairly significant focus um, on, on within the Common Core standards on on data analysis. But what what data what data exploration and analysis also does it it really hones in on the practice standards as well. So that's another critical part um, of the of the conversation where um, students are able to. Um, critique each other's work. Students are able to form an hypothesis or or a conjecture, and then be able to back up their hypothesis with evidence um, that includes data um, as part of their argument that they're making. Um, there's various other practices that also are aligned to um, to the data exploration piece, and then the third um, the third aspect, which is something that I'm personally very passionate and very um, you know I care about this topic a lot is that data can be a way to bring in um, real world um, local and global issues um, into the classroom. So it could be uh, something as Devin mentioned around food um, within Louisville, um, or it could be uh, recycling in, um, in New York City, or it could be crime in Philadelphia. It could be many, many different topics 
Um, but the data is out there, and uh, and it's it's easily accessible. Um, it, you know, as long as there's curation and, and things going on. But the data is out there, and it can be brought in in a meaningful way um, into the project, into the classroom. Um, you know, no matter what class you're in, whether it's math, science, social studies, um, or any of these um, more integrated topics like like food literacy, like Devin's course, um, or otherwise. So, so can I get yeah. the, the the little sentence there? You said uh, data is out there, so long as there's curation. I assume Tuva Labs is about that curation. Yes, that um, a major part of our work is we uh, collaborate very closely with high quality primary data sources, um, such as uh, organizations like the World Bank um, and the local um, lo local um, city um, city agencies that produce data. For example, here in New York. Um, federal agencies like the Energy Information Association, um, practically any um, any topic where data can be brought in, uh, we'll go out and find the um, find the right source uh, and work with them to make the data available in a in a highly usable um, you know friendly environment um, on the platform. So that's part of the, what we part of what we do is is we provide and curate data sets around a variety of to topics that uh, are being covered. Um, in the classroom, whether it's students' projects and their work, or it's uh, part of a topic that is part of the curriculum. Um, so, for example, Black History Month, uh, we're currently trying very hard to to bring in data um, from from that era. Um, so, things like voter registrations um, amongst the the black population in 1960, 1966, and how did that how did that change, um, and have that be available uh, for exploration if it in a history class or a social studies class is looking and covering Black History Month in, in their classrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, this kind of uh, inquiry is, is possible uh, around a variety of topics. And so I can, you know, I can so, look to Tuba Labs a little bit to show you that as well. Let, let's see if anybody has any thoughts or questions at this yeah. point, if you don't mind. Yeah. Sure. And please interrupt. Please Thank interrupt. Uh, yeah. I'd love, I'd love to uh, get some questions going. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking at it right now, and um, I'm actually on a page that's called Average SAT Scores in Bronx High Schools in 2010. Yeah. Um. So it so it seems like um, it's it's mostly spreadsheet, but you could also sort it in in different ways if you want to look at it in different ways. Mm hmm And do the do the um do the users input on the site? Uh, on this site, does this does is this site the platform, and does that provide the tools for them to input the data? So the currently um, the data exploration is uh, still in a kind of a tabular format. Um, we have built tools um, to explore the data set, uh, so they can create the, some of the basic charts, um, bar charts, all the way up to box plots um, around around the data. But uh, what we're actually um, working on, and, and I can keep you guys updated on this, is a is a very dynamic um, way for students to explore data. So it's not click and uh, and select, but it's more drag and and drop, and uh, be able to um, almost in real time dynamically go from bar charts to pie charts, and from pie charts to dot plots. So it's a it's it's one of those things where it's just a tremendous amount of um, we're, we're looking at a lot of research and previous software products what they were doing and and how can we you know kind of create this environment where uh, the data really just comes alive and and it's really the students who are uh, or the explorer of the data is really the one who is um, you know kind of magically making it, making it all happen. So that's so hmm. I, so I I just want to make uh, um, transparent here that part of what we can do. In inviting you here is give you some feedback on Absolutely, what's yeah. going on yeah. for us. Love. Yeah. I mean, before we even get into any more detail, I would love to get feedback, good, bad, whatever it is. Please feel free to uh, uh, to you know send it back to us. Um, part of what we do is is really just want to hear feedback from from teachers and and those in the classroom, um, students as well. Devin, you know, please feel free um, uh, to to give us feedback because that's the whole point of uh, of, of what we're doing. So. Um, so also, can we email. check? So, go ahead. No, I was just saying I'll I'll have my email um, out so that you guys can reach yeah. out to me directly too. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, could could we just go around and talk about how we think about data now and and if this feels like something worth exploring? 
Uh, I can start if you want. Great. Tell me. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I was. I just looked at the uh, Tuva Lab site, and is I have a quick question. Is that all free? There's no charge for it because I signed up and there was no charge. Yeah. yeah. No. Good. So, what's your business plan, too? Because <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> so the Tuva Labs is 100% free for teachers and students and parents. Oh, uh, that's great. And we we start off with the premise that. Um, you know, we can't charge uh, teachers uh, for educational tools. Um, and so what we're planning to do is there's this platform in terms of sustainability, if you will. So the platform is always going to be free. Um, but we're working with organizations um, who have, who are also interested in having a customized version of our platform, our data analysis platform for their needs. So an example is a sports team, for example, uh, who wants to create a data analysis environment just around their data, their stats, their history, um, and their players um, w would be interested in supporting uh, a customized version of their platform for their young fans. Um, and so we're exploring that with a base, like a major league baseball team. We're exploring that um, with uh, with a race car team. But the idea is that the primary platform will always remain free, and certain verticals. So, for example, sports. Um, where the teams themselves uh, want to uh, support uh, uh, data analysis and data literacy within their community will come in and support the platform. So it's going to be 100% free for teachers and students all, t all the time. That's great. Um, and I guess my next question was, it's kind of along the lines of what uh, Jake was talking about. Um, I always thought that it would be really neat to teach students how to uh, use the data. I, I don't know, have you guys seen, I'm, I'm sure some of you have the blog that is called Flowing Data, where mm -hmm. it's all these data charts that are, they just create amazing things with them. Right. Um, and so I'm wondering if that's kind of where you're headed with this, that students would be able to create um, displays like that with it? Yeah, so the students can, students can certainly, uh, students will certainly be able to create um, these beautiful visualizations um, with it, but there's a whole level, you know, if you look at the pedagogy and if you look at kind of the buildup of what's needed in terms of um, knowledge and, and learning to be able to, to, for them to be able to do it, for them to be able to do it. So for example, what you see on uh, flowing data is, you know, a PhD in, in statistical, um, you know, a PhD in, in, in statistics or something, um, he's the one who is doing this. So, you know, this is, that's, his, that's his bread and butter. Um, whereas uh, it takes a, a, a level of, you know, kind of training for students to get there. So right now, what we're doing is the we're curating the data sets for um, our teachers and students. So there's a simple way for teachers and students to reach out to us and say, hey, we're covering um, obesity in our health class this week. I would love to have it, um, some, some childhood obesity data set um, uh, for my students to explore. Or it could be uh, something along the lines of, you know, there's a big, uh, there's a big storm um, in, our, in, our, in our area. Um, you know, can you potentially go out and, and, and you know, see if there is data around the, the last 10, you know, major weather, weather storms in our community and, and, and make that available? Um, or it could be uh, something global like, um, like, like what's happening with the Olympics um, or what's happening um, with, uh, with any kind of, you know, any, any issue um, that you're covering in the classroom or you want to cover in the classroom. Um, you can submit a little request to us, and you know we'll we'll kind of work our butt off and get the data set and make it available. Um, but the the thing is that we've we've kind of identified certain really high quality sources. Um, so it's it's not, you know, depending on the the request, we can pretty much put something together fairly quickly. One last example. Um, it does. I gotta say, it does feel a little bit like sending a. A letter to Santa Claus. I gotta say. I mean, how do you, <laughs> how do you guys actually do all that work? I mean, if so, if if every one of our kids sent you a note saying, you know, I want to know about chocolate, I want to know about this, I want to know about that. Yeah. How would that happen? Like, and what are the yeah. ages? I mean, for you know, if you, it's if you if you think, I mean, if you look at like the kind of request of topics that we get, um, uh, uh, most of the requests can pretty much be covered by about. 15 or 20 sources. So, like the census data covers a lot of material. Um, the World Bank um, data data sets. Uh, World Bank has a huge number of data sets, um, and we are actively working with the data team there. So, if we need something, we'll just you know ping them and, and get in touch with them. You know, um, but 
it, primarily what it ends up being is just that the upload process is very simple in the back end. So right now, um, kind of going back to Jake's point, is that right now we're doing all the data curation, but uh, um, you know very soon we'll allow students to actually conduct their own surveys or collect their own data and upload that as well, um, and then be able to explore that. So um, that's kind of coming up again. That's more of a technical, um, you know, limitation right now, and not a not not a pedagogical limitation. So it's just a matter of um, you know how many uh, you know how many hands and brains we have working on on the technical side of things, but. Um, so eventually, um, students will be able to collect their own data and be able to analyze it, publish it, and share it with uh, with others. Could I say something? Yeah, please. Um, Are well, you guys all familiar with Freakonomics? Uh, yeah. So uh, it's like a it's like a partnership. There's one guy who's the writer, and I think the other guy they're both named Stephen, and the other guy is like the numbers cruncher. So it sounds like you're offering a service to people, and if they want to delve into a topic or at, or pose a question, and then have somebody really sift through the data and present it in a way so that you know everybody can see the answer to the question together, that you're providing this service, and um, is 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 it like a um, you know, high school age kids that are going to be doing this, or is it going to be any any age kids, middle school? Yeah, I don't, we don't. So it's not so much of a service. It's basically so we're, we're we are interested um, right now to find out what are the kinds of topics that teachers and students are interested in exploring when it comes to data. Right. And uh, uh, and all we do is we we put up the data. Um, we don't answer any questions. We don't analyze the data for them. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a. We, we make the data available, and if the teacher, so if you if you were to dig into the, so each data set, alongside with the data set, there's a set of activities that uh, teachers can create on their own, or we can create for them, where basically these are exploratory activities, um, they are analytical activities, or they are critical thinking activities. Um, I can I can show this uh, in, 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 in. Is there is there a way for students to also create? activities around the data set? There's a way right now for students to create questions that they're wondering about um, about the okay. data set, but there's really not there's not a way for them to actually create activities. Uh, we've kind of left that on the teacher side of things. Um, but Jake, I mean it's 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 just about um, giving students and teachers the primary data source that could add in another, another dimension of inquiry into the work that's happening in the classroom, um, and an important you know kind of line of inquiry. So as a as a as a kind of a, as a platform, we'll make the data available. And if, for example, if a teacher wants to um, you know as part of a, a of a homework activity, you know, create a, a set of questions around the data set, um, they could be analytical in nature, where they're actually for example, if it's a time series data set, then uh, have, they have to um, plot the line of best fit, and they have to look at the, the slope and look at the y-intercept and look at what, what these things mean in the context of that data set, then the teacher can actually create these questions and assign them, and the students are kind of doing, doing the work um, for, uh, independently uh, around this. Um, or it can be more exploratory, where, for example, if Devin is looking at, um, at, at healthy food choices in, in Louisville, um, then he can, you know, for example, he can find food prices um, for various items and use that as part of his research project, or use this as part of his uh, paper that he's doing. And you know, um, I we have a couple of students. I think Paul's students had requested data around uh, uh, chocolate and, and child labor. So you know, we'll put that data together as quickly as we can um, and and make it available and let the students really drive the inquiry and 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 do what they want to do with it. And if the teacher is interested in kind of driving a sense of specific questions, then they can also do that. So yeah, let me just let, let me let me jump in and, uh, and then get Joe and Chris to maybe think about um, whether this is adding too much or or if it already if you've already thought about data fitting into your research in some way. But uh, the the chocolate example, and we can go there a little bit if you want or not. But it just was fascinating to me that Chris, your, one of your students, was looking at chocolate. And one of my students, um, she just started saying, you know, I love chocolate and I want to find out about chocolate. Um, and then 
through reading your students' uh, pretty quick um, comments about her research, um, my students realized, oh my goodness, this chocolate comes from child labor and slavery. And, and so there's like, the, it's opening up this chocolate inquiry into really interesting places. Um, so that connection's already happened just by reading each other's stuff a little bit. Um, but then, so I thought, okay, this might be interesting. You know, what could Harshal find for me and for the students around chocolate and child labor? So, so, yeah. I mean, any any topic, you know, um, I saw some of the the research topics that students uh, were, were doing as part of the, uh, on Youth Voices. Um, right. Also, I pointed Herschel to the page. That, yeah, that and you know, when students are looking at things like like diseases um, and um, things like food prices, things like obesity, things like crime, um, then the the data for all this is 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 out there um, somewhere and, and so what we'll do is we'll go out find it and make it available here and as and how students want to uh, uh, want to kind of drive the inquiry it could be um, to hone in on a point or it could be to just explore the data for for the for the exploration sake and, and include that as part of the, the research that they're doing so the there's a lot of freedom when it comes to how this is used um, by the, in the classroom environment and the research side, I think it just adds another dimension um, to the work that's already taking place because um, you're looking at you're looking at things that you know where's the data coming from and what is it actually saying and is that enhancing a point that the student's trying to make or is that um, you know is that is that refuting the point that the student's trying to make? So it just um, it, it it really gets them thinking about what is the evidence behind what I'm trying to say or not say and 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 you know is there enough here for me to confidently um, make a uh, make a statement and, and back it up with some with some data and with some visualizations around it. I have a question. I'm I'm wondering if the once you create a data uh, data set, does it update automatically? Because I kind of wonder. It seems like after you've created a certain number of them, there'd be a lot of repeat hits. You know, like kids, they're always going to be interested in chocolate. So it seems. Right. I'm wondering if you have to go back and remake the set, or if it is pretty much just automatically updates. So it depends on the kind of data. So for example, uh, if the source that we're working with, so for example, like sports data and the data from the World Bank uh, updates automatically. Um, so if the if the World Bank updates the data, then our data gets updated. Um, on the sports side, um, right now it's it's turned off, but we're we've collab we're collaborating with a with a with a provi source provider in Minnesota, where uh, if if that data gets updated, then our data gets updated. So it it really depends on the initial source because if they make if they allow us to make a live link, then we can do it. But if not, then we'll have to go out and update it. But I mean, that's one of the reasons why we're building very close relationships with 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 all the data providers um, to the point where you know we reach out to them and give them examples. Uh, because keep in mind, I mean, one of the the really cool things about uh, about this aspect is that when when organizations like the World Bank or um, like the City of New York, um, they, they when they find out that their data is being used in the classroom as research or as in the classroom for learning and for teaching purposes. It makes their week um, because there's not a whole lot going on with the data otherwise. And when they see that it's used for educational purposes and it's coming in and it's having, uh, it's adding a dimension to the learning process. Um, you know, they they love that stuff. So that's why they also are interested in keeping in touch with us. And they'll reach out to us and say, hey, you know, what's the most uh, you know popular data set, or what can we do? What should we focus on, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's it's really interesting. I I am more fascinated by it the more I hear about it because I I really think you could use it in a lot of different ways in the classroom for sure. Chris, speaking jumping. speaking of uh, different ways you might use it, um, you know, like a couple of things are going through my mind. One, the most recent book I got to uh, read is Big Data. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the these yeah. people who are uh, looking at data and kind of telling stories of data. So it's it's definitely you know on my radar just personally um, you know as a bit of a researcher myself I think of like programs like SPSS yeah that are just incredibly expensive yeah and I think like you're probably headed this what, way what but is that Chris what it's is like SPSS? a it's a statistics program 
I think I forget IBM I think bought it so now it's just like out of my price range mm -hmm. um, but um, you know I would imagine you're building in stuff where from the numbers you could do kind of correlation yep. and regression analysis and that'd be yeah. very cool <laughs> uh, but then as a teacher and like what we were talking about with Joe and Paul the potential of doing these collaborations that we're already doing say about like crime rate in Oakland versus crime rate I'm in Salt Lake City versus crime rate in Chicago um, you know there's or trends in, in you know major fire. cities right where um, some cities are crime rates are lower and, and there's pockets in cities and so I mean it lends itself to local kind of data crunching but also um, I could see things like uh, air quality around right. the West, you know, water around the West are, are big kind of regional issues that I think students have a, a, a large part to play in in helping solve problems via data. So, I mean, I see it from a number of levels that's, that's pretty cool. So I'm interested in doing more with this. Yeah, I, you know, as Chris, as you mentioned, I mean, you know, the holy grail of all this is first the awareness. Um, so creating awareness about some of the real issues that that are taking place in our world, um, whether they're global or highly local. Um, the data can drive that and, and enable that awareness to take place. And then, um, you know, the, the, the the, as all of us would wish, you know, there's some sort of an action or an advocacy um, that can take place afterwards. If there's if there's inspiration and awareness within the student or a group of students, then um, then part of what they can do is maybe get inspired to go out and, and do something about it, dig deeper into it. Um, and I'll, you know, one one example I'll give you is um, I was in a while we were so we're. Part of, you know, as, as, as Paul mentioned, part of this is we're very active in development. So you'll see new things coming up and, and adding and changing every day based on the feedback we get from educators and teachers and students. Um, so we're in the classrooms in Brooklyn um, every week, um, you know, working with a, with a group of teachers and students to test out the product and test out the interface. And we were doing this uh, activity, with, students were doing this activity where they were looking at um, the secondary school enrollment rate in China and India over the last 20 years. Um, so the, in the neighborhood where we the, um, the school is is near Sunset Park, uh, which is a very um, very heavy on, on Asian population. So a lot of kids in the class were from China. And one of the students, uh, you know, they were doing some basic analysis and one of the students noticed pretty immediately that in 1998 the, uh, the secondary school enrollment rate in China dropped drastically. And so he like he raised his hand and he's like, you know, Ms. Cherry, you know, what's happening here? You know, why do you think this this happened? So Ms. Cherry's like, I don't know. You know, Google, see what see what you can find. And it turns out, you know, he found a BBC article about there was a major flood um, in China in 1998 that displaced millions of people. So he like raised his hand again, and he's like, Ms. Cherry, do you think this might be the issue? And you know, suddenly, like, he started asking his friends around him, and it turned into like a 15, 20 minute discussion about you know where they were. Uh, at that time, or whether they remember their parents being impacted by it, and this whole kind of discussion took place, and then he made a note of that in his response on Tuva Labs, and then moved on to like the next the next part of the activity. Uh, but I was sitting there watching, and and that's when you know it hit me that these kinds of conversations and these these kinds of kind of moments can take place um, in a in a in, in in many different ways across um, across classrooms. So it's really powerful. Um, in many different ways, but awareness um, is, I think, the first aspect of it, and then that additional rigor um, that is kind of coming our way. So, you know, every aspect of our lives is now being kind of, you know, that we're recorded, and it's all data that that people are, um, you know, either we we have it available on our on our mobile phones or um, it's bombarded with us. So, being literate about it is is um, you know is is going to be really critical. So that's that's kind of the why we started doing this in the first place. Marshall, do you mind mentioning the school? It was uh, Telecommunications High School. Oh, cool. interesting. Yeah, I just found out, in fact, that the principal of that school is now deputy chancellor for um, for teaching and learning in in New York City DOE with the new mayor coming in. So very cool. Yeah, Joe, cool. you have any thoughts? And then Devin, you too. Give some space. 
Um, I was going to say that uh, I see the value of, of the kids. Um, I just put a p couple of questions on there right now. Um, hopefully I get an answer. Um, <laughs> oh, and you mean up on, up on uh, Tuba Labs? Up okay. on Tuba Labs. <laughs> okay. So, um, I, gave, I, gave, I gave Harshal a, 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 about an hour and a half to get something on chocolate. And it didn't I was in the bronze, unfortunately. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so, yeah, so, well, Chris and I, we're ha I mean, and Paul, we're all having this hangout tomorrow, and, and I'm just thinking, you know, our kids are in different parts of the research process, but the need for data um, right now, I mean, I, I just gave back all their papers, and... For 75% of them, it was, where are your numbers? Um, where's, the, where's the percentages? Where's the stats? You need this. You need that. Um, and so that's so why they're engaging so you, in this. So, so, Joe, I just want you already require some sort of numerical argument, of some sort of quantitative argument in most your of the, papers? Most, yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of the topics require that. I mean... They need to look mm -hmm. at the numbers. They need to look at they do they do need to compare statistics. If they're going to say that, if they're going to try to propose solution, we've okay. So we've gotten more to the data part because when we get the feedback from the judges that they present to at the end of the year, the mm -hmm. judges are asking them, you know, where's the real research that makes the topic original, but also like they're asking for the kids to have a solution or something small, some offer, you know, and so we've had this one, the focus on the civic engagement, but also there was this part about what are you basing your solution on? The kids have, like, no idea what direction to go, and oftentimes when they finally see the numbers, they're like, oh, and then they figure it out. And a lot of the topics are local, so now they're doing all this field research work. Um, but part of the revision of their papers are... What the heck are you? Yeah, where are your stats? Um, but I was saying, Chris, if we like tomorrow, if we after the hangout, if the kids that are all focusing on, because I have all my kids coming that are coming on with the sports and exercise and lifestyle choices related to sports. Um, so all my athlete topics are coming on. Mm -hmm. It'll be fun. If we could just consider maybe a a question. I saw some um, on Tuva Labs like. I mean, I was just thinking practically. So, but, yeah, what, you, what did you put up there? Just read. On so, and by the way, you can put a question up on TubaLabs at uh, TubaLabs.com slash... Oh, I, I don't remember. Slash that. Y, right? Is that, no, uh, slash... Okay. I put it up where What's it the slash? Ask. 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 And oh, yeah, yeah. put it up about yeah. leadership demographics in Oakland. So, I'm sure we'll be able to find that. Um, very you know, it's interesting to see that. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, she. That's so. The funny part is. We might have lost her. Have that data set to consider in their conversation. I don't know. Um, so that kind of. This would be one of those things where I would say, kiddos, here's the link. I'd post it on the send it all to their emails right now and go have them. Tested. I went to go see the one part I was looking at was the instructional resources part because I clicked on, yeah. you know, what were some of the instructional resources attached to the data sets that already exist. Yeah. And so I'm curious to see, you know, like when, when those happen because the kids, the students, my students would be very interested in using that part. They're not teachers, but would be interested to use it to conduct their own local, you right. know, that are trying to do this via their social media. Yeah. Um, and on that level, so they want to do it themselves. They want to. Yeah. They want to try to create, um, and talk about that process on their blogs, kind of thing. So, you know. Yeah. So then, on, on their blog, they could point to the analysis to page. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. So. Yeah. So in general, um, the, the, some of the feedback I've already given to our partial is, um, is that. So far, that, that analysis page is, is very much assumes a, a sort of teacher-centered classroom. And you guys probably need to do that, because that's where too many people, schools in America are. But <laughs> you know, if, if, we, if we can think about having tools be more horizontal, where peers work with peers, that would be interesting. Yeah. Um, if I could, yeah. if I could uh, mention, you know, the... Um, the the opportunity for um, original data sets like um, you know the, where the kids do the research themselves and report it um, something you know pretty easy 
uh, probably to do would be, you know, if somebody was doing something like tracking nutrition and, uh, you know, what the kids are eating and, and, and logging it in, you know, even if it wasn't 100% complete, mm -hmm. you know, just to start to get this picture of, oh, my God, what are these kids eating, you know. Um, you know so that's would, upcoming, right? Her, yeah, her that's coming. coming. That's yeah, coming, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, really? Because, yeah, uh, yeah I remember yeah. a couple of years ago they um, they put uh, these, like, uh, air um, quality um, measurement um, backpacks on kids in the Bronx, and um, there was this, this study of air quality, and... Um, you know, the the kids had to um, bring this this backpack wherever they went, and you know the results of it were so like shockingly bad that they just like canceled everything because you know it it would have required like literally like the EPA to like ban trucks or something. You know, it was it was so it was so shocking bad. But you know you know it, when it when it comes to you know people crowdsourcing you know, important information so that people can take a look at it, um, you know, it, it might have to be schools that lead the way because government, you know, is just, you know, incapable or, or they don't have the resources, you know. Yeah. So, you know, that could be that could be really important. And um, the other thing I noticed was um, on these new Common Core state exams, you know, I think I, I took a look at um, sixth grade last year. And, um, you know, they have these, like, these data sets, you know, and it was like, you know, um, Johnny, rolled a mar Johnny rolled a dice seven times, and this was the data set that came out of it. So they really are trying to push, you know, the, you know, the idea that kids are supposed to be, you know, looking at, at, at this stuff and, you know, looking at it in this way. But they haven't been giving the teachers, you know, the materials, you know, to, to say... We need to start looking at, at data sets and, and um, you know, kind of playing, you know, creatively with, you know, raw facts and statistics, you know. So, you know, I see, I see what you're saying, but, you know, the system isn't really, like, um, on top of it. I have a, I have a question or... Uh, Go ahead, Tommy. Yeah. It's a, just a project that I do um, during... I do book clubs, so each, you know, I have five different... Uh, groups in a class that are each reading a different book and they're all centered around one topic so for example my next set of book clubs are all sent around uh, bias you know like raisin in the sun um, mm -hmm. their eyes were watching God etc and I'm wondering if maybe and maybe uh, actually Devin could answer this if I said something like part of your and what now while they're doing that they have a research paper going on and I just say you can research whatever you want but you have to incorporate bias in some way into it um, and talk about how your topic is affected by bias so like for example the great Gatsby you could say is affected by bias according to social class um, now if I were to say to the students you have to have bias represented some way but you also have to figure out some way to get a data or a data set that shows that I mean do you think that 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 would be that using this site they could maybe come up with some ideas of how to research that let's go to Devin on that Devin how would you feel if a teacher gave you that assignment <laughs> I mean it would definitely take take some uh, really critical thinking I mean just thinking about it now you know I could look at you know maybe populations in East and West Egg or New York City or whatever from that time and see, you know, like the um, wealth distribution between those two, maybe even, because uh, I know we're studying this in AP U.S. history, bring in, like, the political machines of that time and how they were influenced and by who with the wealth distribution. I think it would be really, really interesting, but um, that's probably because I'm a major nerd and <laughs> enjoy looking at things like that. I think we all are. We love nerds. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I just saw that. I just saw um, uh, this study came out. I, I just heard about it today. I think on uh, this morning on NPR. But uh, they were saying that um, people change their when they self-report, and and then when their race is reported for them, that it, it's changed over time. Like the same people. You know, if they're biracial, they would um, 
you know, or they're mixed, they would they would change their designation, and they looked over long periods of time the incidence of people that after they were incarcerated, all of a sudden, you know, they they get marked down as being black, and before that they were white, or you know, after declaring a bankruptcy and all this stuff, the the way the institutions you know, classify you, but then they said that it was just as prevalent with the people self-reporting when they would have these kind of like, um, you know, impacts on their lives and how that was, you know, being manifest in, in bias, you know, even when it's the person themselves, you know, uh, describing their race. So it, w it was pretty interesting. I'm, I, I wanted to read the article, but it was just on the, on the news today. So, by the way, if you if you're if you're listening to this in a podcast, you missed Jake getting to see what Jake is doing while he's talking. <laughs> you were you were drawing at the same time. We, we're seeing your screen. Are you aware of that? Oh yeah, the screen share. Right. That's yeah. That that's the whole yeah. That's the whole thing that that I learned last week. It's so exciting. You could <laughs> you, you could hit this. I think this is new because I don't remember this the first couple of times we were doing this um, Google Hangouts. Mm -hmm. But you can now screen Pixel, share yeah. and then. Um, assign any window, and if you have, I have my tablet here and my stylus, mm -hmm. and you could just uh, open up any screen. And so, um, you know, this this is really valuable when you're talking about visuals with kids. So, and so quick metadata there. We I, we may have lost Devin, but the, oh, he's coming back. Good. Okay. Good. So um, I, where where are we? Um, one of, uh, let me just say that one of the other um, thoughts after looking at Tube Labs I had was that. Once I created um, graphs, I wanted to be able to embed them like on a post on Youth Voices, and um, and so that's uh, right now we could we could like take a you know a screenshot and yeah. and do that. No, but that's an issue for me. What, what we'll do is what we'll do is we can create a an embed link um, right mm -hmm. below the chart, and you can just like copy paste that embed link and take it wherever with wherever you can, but. Um, I mean, as I mentioned to you last time too, is that the chart is just um, one of the components of the student responses, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so we have kind of Joe going back to your instruction, the instructional resources piece. So the instructional resources piece we have done into three parts, as I mentioned. The first one is what we call exploratory, where it's more meant for lower grade students of lower grades, where all they're really doing is. They're exploring the data by visualizing it, and they're asking their own questions. They're not answering the questions posed by teachers, but it's more they're making observations, and they are asking questions about what they're wondering and what they're seeing. Um, so they're, they're meant for um, lower grade students. Um, and then we have uh, an, an, an analytical piece, which is more looking at things like units, the attributes, um, if there's a mathematical component to it, where they're looking at uh, the slope or the line of best fit, correlation, coefficient, correlation versus causation. So that's more of a mathematical quantitative piece to the instructional resources. And the last one is critical thinking, uh, which is I think the, the one that's most relevant to this conversation, which is where we give students a space to ask questions and answer questions like, you know, what might be driving um, the the difference in life expectancy amongst these 20 nations. So why might life expectancy in, um, in, in Japan be X times more than life expectancy in, in Malaysia, even though they're so close by in terms of geography? So it gives students that, that canvas similar to a blog post where they can explain their answers and they can save their work and, and share it uh, and take that link with them. So uh, the instructional resources, and we're still developing like the pedagogy around this, um, but the idea is that even a third, so we have third grade classes um, in, in, in various parts of the country explore data around amusement parks and around um, mm -hmm. movies and they're looking at population uh, and you know what are the top ten amusement parks in the country and you know where are they located, are, you know, mostly in, in California and Florida, you know, why might that be the case? So it, it really drives multiple levels in terms of complexity and in terms of um, catering to the standards and in terms of just uh, what the students would uh, would be capable of doing at that at that level, so uh, that's how we have constructed the instructional resources. Um, so, if I create an instructional resource, um, I, that goes up publicly, and then Joe's students could use it. Right, you can choose to make it public, and Joe's students can use it. Joe can create one that everybody anybody can use. You know, so we have teachers create um, their own instruction, their own activities and lessons, and share them with the rest of the community. 
um, and and you, you know you can you can do whatever you want with it. So everything's kind of you know open in that regard. Yeah. Um, you can choose to make the activity closed or or public or private in the sense of the response of the students. If you want to make them share, then you just choose it to be a public um, activity. But if you want to, um, but if you want to uh, make it private, where only you want to see the responses, then you can make it private as well. Hmm. So. Again, I, I would, uh, and I think this was implied earlier, but I would also encourage another level um, between, t well, I don't know, it's like regular student, that's cool, um, and how you have it set up, but there might be a, uh, you know, edit, a uh, teacher student or something level, too, you know? Yeah. Um, or intern, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Primarily, I mean, the, the the issue, I think that's something that we'll have to think about a little bit um, and find a solution to it, because the issue, I think, ends up uh, at, at multiple levels. One is just about, um, so, like, registration, and, and, you know, we, we don't collect um, any information about the student besides their name, and that's pretty much it. From a teacher, and what permissions are allowed and not allowed. Um, so there's a, a various different things, but as it, you know, if... If if you as a teacher or as a graduate, you know we have graduate students in in college, um, community colleges as well coming on, so they can just sign up as a teacher and they can really do all the yeah. things they want to do. Okay, yeah, if we let you know what's going, on. yeah, that sounds yeah, good. Absolutely. Anna Smith, welcome. Anna, introduce yourself briefly and say hello. Hi, you you just get to join us here at the end because some for some reason you have a class yeah, or something I during teach. our during I'm our here. time. I don't know. I know. How you do. <laughs> I know. So I always say this come come in in the last ten minutes. So I just um, I uh, teach here in uh, New York City, and um, yeah, <laughs> I have a group on youth uh, youth voices this this year. So just learning how we're doing everything. Great. So and are, are your students could could we since you're here just say. Tomorrow, assuming your students are going to make it there, we have some pretty severe weather, weather coming to New York. But um, are are they going to be able to get on to the hangout well, tomorrow, or is that um, going to be pending, in the future? Yeah. yeah, pending whether after school programs are canceled or not, uh -huh. um, they should be. I, I just don't know how we've been running. I, I, is this the is this the second chat that they've had about their research questions? Yeah, so? but you know we're all over the place as far as that's concerned okay. in terms of the process. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't matter, I think. Or what was your question? Well, I'm wondering. I, I just wondered how how it's even formatted. Is it one student talking to another student? Like how how around <laughs> inquiry topics? Joe, take it. Chris, take it. <laughs> it was uh, formatted. Both and. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we're in different parts of the process. So Chris's kids are. They just you know they form their topics and they're talking about them. They're in the initial stages. I get right and. My kids did a draft already, so they're honing a narrow research topic, and they're all, yeah, social equity topics on my end. Um, and then as far as the process goes, um, tomorrow, um, Joe kind of came up with this, I think, last week. Um, one of my students, Cassidy, um, during last week's chat, um, agreed to kind of take on um, the facilitator from my classroom. Uh, so I think what will happen is... Um, She'll kind of spearhead talk in my room, and maybe uh, you know she'll talk about her topic. And she tried to find students of Joe's and students from my classes that are um, in the broad category of like health um, and and exercise and that kind of stuff. Um, and then she'll, um, like I said, kind of spearhead the efforts there. Other times we've left it a little more free for all. Um, it it still is pretty loose. Um, <laughs> I think I think we're learning that that, that the more the more specific the topic and well, although we, then we can open it up we can do both you know did have that, a specific conversation did that answer your that. question Anna yes yeah, yeah no I think it did um, and so just so that people know that my students are doing a philosophical inquiry into their topics so they they they've had lots of problems get, getting on for some reason I haven't been able to be up there with them and so. I'm trying to sort that all out, but but many of them have taken on social issue topics as well. Yay. So that they they're like their intro will be around you know social topic. Um, someone's doing anorexia. Someone's doing um, abuse. Somebody's do you know so we'll do these topics, and so there might be um, some general research that they take 
um, as an example, and then they will they're going to break it down in terms of um, you know the underlying philosophical tenets that are underneath that about why that is the state it is. So, so Joe, not Joe, sorry, Anna. One of the, I, I think I pointed you to, but I'll point it again. The the place where where Chris has listed all or his students have listed all their topics and Joe has is at youthvoices.net slash live. Um, yeah, what it, the pound sign topics is oh, okay. where the, that is. If you just go to youthvoices.net slash live and then scroll down, you'll find it on a tab there. So is that, we, yeah, so, go ahead. So if you could list, have your kids or have somebody list your kids' yeah. topics there, that would be one way to, to, yeah, to I don't even begin connecting I also. So, anyway, and, and others as well. Uh, we should wrap up tonight, though, um, Thank you. as we go uh, here. Uh, so we go around and hear kind of final thoughts, other thoughts um, as we go. And, Joe, you have to start and introduce your daughter again. Sorry. Oh, oh. she's sleeping? We don't want it. <laughs> I was just teasing you. <laughs> While she's uh, there. Don't wake her up. Okay. I'm not. I'm trying. Okay. I'll go quiet. Um, what are we doing? Just final know. thoughts tonight. Oh, final thoughts. Um, nothing. I'm excited for our conversation uh, tomorrow. I I look forward to uh, talking about data with the kids. We're already talking about data, so um, yeah. I'm really. I like this. The the conversations though. They're really liberating for our kids. It happens during the lunch hour, so hmm. yeah. And this, this, the pre, the pre conversation always helps. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, when did we go to Tommy? Go ahead. Any last thoughts? Oh, Harshal, I just wanted to thank you. This looks really interesting. I'll definitely check it out. Maybe I could have you know each uh, book club try to figure out some way to uh, mm -hmm. research yeah. some data. So that I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be great. Yeah, and, and, and one of my last thoughts, and we'll get to others, is is that um, Devin, Devin's description of what he would have to do to do Tommy's assignment made really clear how um, interdisciplinary this work is, and that, that, that's part of what makes it pretty exciting. But, yeah. Devin, you have any last thoughts? Devin's internet is having some issues. He's... Oh, darn. Yeah. Thank you. Chris, you get last thoughts. Um, yeah, just um, I was curious about um, tomorrow if uh, anybody wants to join us. The time is um, what again? I know it from my noon, it's a, noon, noon Pacific is how yeah. I like to think about it, and then three three p.m. Eastern. So, yeah, so and everybody in between, you can figure it out. Right, right? so one Mountain, two Central, you got three it. Eastern. Um, but you know what's going to come up is um, Herschel. I think um, you know data is just naturally part of what we're doing in our research anyway. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of posts from my students about the different databases we look at um, just for information. Yeah. Um, so it's a natural part of the conversation already. Yeah. Thanks for that. You get last word, Herschel. Go ahead. Uh, no, I mean, some great conversations, uh, two points. Um, so Joe, you mentioned that a lot of your students are, meant, you know, kind of tackling um, and looking into social equity issues, and that's a big part of, big focus of ours as well, um, just of who we are and what we want to do. So um, if, you know, as in how the, the kind of topics that your students are looking at, uh, do I encourage them to come on and put in a request, or you can do it yourself. And, um, you know, we're, what we have found is, a social topic that's really interesting to one student or one teacher is usually relevant to many, many people. Um, so that's that's one thing. And Chris, you know, as well, um, same with same with you as well. If 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 and how you know there's topics or or or, or, or issues that you and your students are looking at and would um, would want us to you know gather the data set and, and enable um, your students to explore it on the platform, um, you know, please please reach out and. I've put my email here as well, so if you guys have any feedback, um, I'd love to, you know, stay in touch and, um, you know, get continue to get good, you know, how, how we can improve improve the platform. And um, so, love to kind of stay in touch and chat more about it. Uh, there's a lot here. There's many layer, layers to be peeling off, uh, but this is an amazing conversation, and I've got a lot more to think about. I might train right up uh, from Midtown to Washington Heights now uh, from the office back to the apartment.
So good, thank you so much. Good. So um, by the way, have we convinced you there's just not math teachers who are interested, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's why. No, that's great. It's, it's, it's good to see. Yeah, yeah. But um, did I see in your Twitter? This is uh, extra here, but that, that you were talking with Matthew at KQED. Is that? And isn't that your yeah, the, yeah. the guy you've so, been working with, Chris? So KQED yeah. reached out to us yeah. uh, last That's week, funny. and uh, so they want to um, they want to find a way or collaborate with us to well we're we're thinking about how to collaborate together. But they were really interested um, in the notion that, as you said, there is a quantitative piece that can be introduced in practically any topic, whether it's news, humanities, or the sciences or otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so we had a conversation earlier this week, and then um, hopefully in, the, in a few weeks you'll see um, in, in the KQED's blogs, the education blogs, um, you'll, um, you'll see us uh, you know, making those data sets available for them as well, uh, for, for students to explore as part of their, part of their work. So uh, KQED, I'm pretty excited about that as well, because it's so similar to what's happening here. Um, and it'll be really good a learning experience for us. Actually, Joe and I work with Matt at KQED. So. Oh, really? That's yeah. awesome. Small world. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. Hopefully, see like two of the labs at the KQED do now uh, kind of all kind of coming together on their website and a way for students to kind of bring in a data component to their to their to the responses um, to the KQED um, do now activities and and their and their articles. They do some amazing work. Right. So very cool. Thank you all. Um, we're going to uh, close down tonight uh, by saying, as we always, always do, thank you to Dave Cormier and Jeff Cormier and Jeff Levo, um, who started us up here at edtechtalk.com, which is a channel with the World Bridges Network. So we'll see you next week or whenever you can join us. Devin, thank you so much for uh, popping in here with us. Um, wish we had, had more of your voice, but at any rate, <laughs> thank you. And Harshal, thanks so much for introducing to the labs and friends. Thanks nice for having me. Good Thank night. You. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night.